Now that we are a little more familiar with what parametric modeling is and the relationship between Rhino and Grasshopper, uh, let's take a closer look at the Grasshopper interface and let's break down everything that we can see around. Um, and let me show you um, um, how the basics of creating a small Grasshopper definition works. And then I will also want to show you like how to customize Grasshopper in a way that I think um, makes life easier and better, and then it's going to help you uh, learn this process faster. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to show you is that again, Grasshopper is this floating window that we usually dock side by side uh, next to Rhino, like I showed in my previous video. And then um, we can see several things. So first of all, we do have here a top menu with a lot of uh, the usual suspects, so for example, opening a new document, saving the document, and like accessing some special folders, etc. Uh, copy pasting stuff, finding stuff on definition, and then a bunch of other menus that are a bit more specific to Grasshopper, the things that happen in the world of Grasshopper. So I will explain that some of these options um, in a second, but then I want to point you to the second most important part here in Grasshopper, which is um, what I believe it's called the component ribbon. And the component ribbon is basically this uh, area where we have a lot of tabs. And each one of these tabs represents families of components. Components being each one of these boxes that represent an operation that we can perform in Grasshopper. Okay, a parametric modeling operation, a geometry generation operation, or all other kinds. Okay, they are distributed by categories. So you have like primitives, mathematics, sets, vectors, curves. Uh, and if you want to learn what they're actually named, you just have to hover over them. And then this pop up shows up with a full name surface, for example, and all the components that are inside. And inside of each one of these, you can find that there are certain categories. So for example, inside of vector, we can find grids, uh, we can also find planes, we can find points, and we can find vectors, right. And all these drop downs, each one of these icons represent one represents one of these components that we can use for geometry manipulation or generation. So for example, if I go to vector and I go to point, uh, you can see here that the first one that shows up is construct point. And if I hover over it, I get a tooltip description, construct a point from XYZ coordinates. So if I click and I drag this all the way down here on the canvas, you can see that this box pops up. And if I hover over this box, I get the tooltip saying this is going to construct a point from XYZ coordinates. All right. Um, for example, um, let's take um, a closer look. So this area here, the one that I have, uh, the, the one that I can move around and, and drag is called the canvas. And this is where I deploy, this is where I drop all my components and where I link them with wires, and where I can create this parametric definition of the geometry or the model that I want to generate. Okay, uh, things that I can do in this canvas is with the right button, I can pan around. Okay, with the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. And then if I click on the component with the left mouse, I can move the component around. And if I click on the component with the right button, I can get some of the options, which I will get to in a second. Okay. Um, this we can zoom in infinitely, you can zoom in out. Um, so this is the main area where we're going to be working and assembling our parametric logic. Okay. So as I showed in the previous video, I believe, uh, we're going to create a very simple definition where uh, we're just going to create one point that is parametrically controlled. So you can see that I dropped here this component that constructs a point and I will explain a bit more of this in a second. And um, you can see, if you go to primitives and to inputs, you can see that here we have this component that is called a number slider. If I drop this number slider here, and I, uh, and I copy paste it three times, I just did control C control V, you can see that now I have three values that are controlling the location of my point. And then if I move the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the c coordinate, we can see that the pre visualization of this component here is showing us where that point is in 3D space. I can also go to primitives, inputs, and panels, and I can drop here a panel 
which is basically a text box that if I connect to the output of the component, I can see the coordinate representation of where this point is. And you can see that as expected, the X coordinate matches with the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the C coordinate with the C coordinate, right? Um, if I take a closer look at the component, it is very important to understand that components always, at least 98% of the times, components always have inputs and they have outputs and they work from a left to right way. Well, which means that everything, all these knobs that we can see on the left hand side, each one of them are inputs. And if we hover over the input, we can see a lot of really important things. So we can see, for instance, we can see a description that says that this needs the X coordinate of the vector. So here I can feed in the X coordinate of this point. And another very important thing is that I can't really point to with my icon, but you can see that uh, the yellow tooltip on the top left corner has an icon, the hexagon icon with the black background that has this 0 0.1. That 0 0.1 is telling us that the type of data that that input needs is a number, okay? Um, as opposed to, so you what you can you so you, what you can plug in there is anything that is giving you a number, but you will not be able to plug there things that give you, for example, um, curves or points or other things that are not numerical, right? Um, if I hover over the Y, you can see that same. I, I request here a Y coordinate, and it also has to be a number with decimal part, and the same for the C. How this is very important because very often what will happen is that components require specific types of data, and they can only work with that type of data. So, for example, if I want to loft a surface over a bunch of curves, I will need curves as inputs. I will not be able to loft a surface over a list of points. Right? Same thing here. I cannot plug in a curve into the X component because the component doesn't know what to do with a curve when it expects a number, right? So this will be a very common mistake that we will do at the beginning. So it's very important as we start getting to know components that we analyze by hovering over them, that we take a look at that black hexagon to tell us what type of data is either requested as an input, or if we hover over the output, you can see that the output is telling us that it's, it's called is named point and is giving us a point and that hexagon has the white cross that is representing that the type of data that is coming out from the output of this component is of the type a point. It's not a curve, it's not a line, it's just a simple point. But you may ask me, well, but Jose, how can I know that that X in the hexagon represents a point? Or how can I know what that icon actually means? Well, it's actually fairly easy. If you go to parameters, and if you go to here to geometry or to primitive, you can see that all these components here have these hexagonal icons, and they have a description here, Boolean, number, integer, text, or for example here, the one with the white cross, this one is a point, right? So as we start getting to know Grasshopper, uh, at the beginning, it will be useful to go here and take a look at those icons and what those icons represent in terms of uh, data types, okay? Um, but we will see more of that later in a second. But this is the basic of this is the basics of, of creating a grasshopper definition. You can create a, you can create a you can also double click on the canvas and start typing construct. Point, and you can see that a list of, com of, 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 of suggestions pops up. So I can click on this one, construct point, and then I can take the output of the slider, which is a number, and plug it into the input of the point. I can take the output of this other slider, plug it into the input Y, and take this output and plug it into the input C. And therefore, linking those sliders that allowed me to output a numerical value to the input of this component. And the same for the panel. I can link the output of this point to the input here 
in the panel to get a numerical representation of this point, okay? So this is like the super, super basic introduction to how components and work, what type of components are, what type of data we can work with, and how to link them together with wires to create this chain of reactions, okay? But let me show you first a couple of tricks of how I would like us to uh, customize our Grasshopper UI so that um, so that we can all work together with the same with the same um, with the same set of parameters. Okay, let me show you that. 